Okay, I'm gonna switch this on. Okay, updated, we're now focusing on doing and making, okay, so, let's see what we've got here, I would like to pull out, Honestly, what I really want is something that will relax me as I'm doing it, because I have had the most stressful week. So. I picked up a couple different brushes that I like, and what I'd like to do next is set up some sort of tray or whatever I can work out of. Um, I'm not seeing one. Immediately available. Okay, fine, whatever. Um, I don't understand why I don't have one right here because I've got so much other junk to fucking paw through, right? Okay, whatever, fine. We're fine. We are fine. I'm just gonna use this, okay? This is a watercolor palette. It's kind of what's going on. Yeah. So. If you followed other previous streams, this is like a cat meow meow setup. Right. See, so this is the thing too. I might. Which one should I focus on? My beautiful face. Probably not for maker stuff. I feel like for maker stuff, you all want to see what I make. That's probably built in. Yeah. Let's turn it down. Oh, okay. So you can see. Okay, set up. I think so. And what I would like to have as well going on in the background is something 
interesting. A lot of the times I just have something in the background. Um, It relaxes me, and I, you know, I would like to also see if there's something that y'all are interested in just watching. Okay, so, can brushes over here on the right side. Got some super long ones. Ah! Super not, okay. So, first things first, I would like to do some mild water wash just on the face. So the fluffier the brush is, the more water it can carry, and therefore transfer to your paper. Obviously, you can't see too much what is happening here, because water is... Hopefully, at least. Transparent. So it's going to soak in just a little bit. Also, do not leave your brushes in water unless they should be. Because the longer you leave your brushes in water, the longer your water has to undermine the integrity of the glue holding all of your paints to get the paintbrushes together. <sighs> What will we watch in the background? Um, I mm, let's figure her out. Right, let's go put a little, a little baby boy in the back. Okay, so let's. This next setup. Okay. Water. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do Wah. red. We have it. We breathe it real good. Okay, so we're on paintbrush. Just do obviously whatever works best for you. As you can see, the base of the ear. He has a very treated it with water. The color is watching out. So that's to a certain degree it is intentional, but it's also one of those things where you don't really control one hundred percent. Of what will happen. I don't know. It's interesting sometimes to let your water, your interest, take a little bit more of the control. So obviously, as you can see, following along the pencil lines that I've already laid out, building up a little bit more color and structure, right? So, let us follow along this little ear here. Huh. Interesting. What I think is tough about this is Determining the structure you think is most important. It's 
So I'm gonna put this in the water. Okay, thin, very thin. And obviously, as you can see here, I'm really letting the um, flow of the water really do what it wants at the top. And now that the um, water here has kind of dried out, it really is up to um, what's determined by the paintbrush instead of allowing the color to merely seek into the page and beyond it. So, I would just like to do a little bit more backup and support along these lines. Really um, deepen up the red color here. You, know, you can't overwrite the lead pencil underline. That's curly. That's part of what she is. Okay. So let's grab. One bad boy. Alright, what do we think would be another good color? Um, uh -huh. Ow! There's so many things back here. Can I just, okay. Found it. Okay, I'm just gonna set up a color here. This is, if you can see, but it's a Bombay ink, so it will stand up if I want to do additional colors on top. So I previously had a very, very thin brush, I have like a detail, detail brush. Let's not give the benefit of the doubt. Okay. So. So we're really focusing on these outlines. I also want to lay over and follow some of the, um, what do you call it, gesture drawings here. Alright, so, again, here's the thing. The sketches that you have will really capture the movement. And it's only through a lot of figure drawing that you will ever come up with something that both captures the movement and is very minimalist. And this is not what I'm saying I've done. God, no. I'm really saying here is a draft that you can follow, especially because in these under sketches, as you may be able to see, I've built up kind of the form. And that's really important as you're coming up with these, you know, designs, these straights, these narrows, these curves. Ideally, even in your most um, abstract form, there will be some reference, some reference to the original form, animal, cat, architecture, whatever it is that first intrigued you, you know what I'm saying? So follow th follow that through. Whatever ink we lay down now, 
This is the benefit. Whatever ink we lay down now will not, cannot as the Bombay ink, as an India ink. As a Bombay ink, you cannot undermine it, right? Not with water anyway. So, here is a very cheap, very easy watercolor palette. And that, sir, ma'am, whoever, is how we will set up our background. And as you can see, even though I can't fuck up the existing watercolor, if your ink is still loose, water will move it. Really, this is meant to be an enjoyment and experimentation. It's also interesting to question, to wonder, do you think that the blue or the red has more um, kind of adherence to the page because that's that would be good information to have you know what i'm saying which colors really stick to the page over the rest all right so i don't know if you can see but at the top of the ear right i've got this kind of peachy color that i pulled right out of the palette and it's already starting to pull into a purple. Okay, I'm gonna pull. Honestly, let's pull some more purple, but th going this way. I want this to be where our deep gestural colors go. So let's also have a little bit of this, this uh, reddish brown. As you can see here, I think what can be really hard is doing an underpainting. So that's not something we're covering here, but underpaintings are hard. I am kind of um, impatient, let's say. Um, And yet still, you know, I keep trying to do a, a craft that really is based on your your patience, the longevity that you're willing to put in. You know, it takes so long to build up, like, your own personal style, your own personal interests, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's easy to walk away. It's, 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 it's hard to stick with it. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more orange, just because I want to make sure the orange down here has a little bit more of the redness I put into this shoulder. Oh, that's too dark. Nevertheless. You can work around. Okay. I just want to make sure there's kind of... Now that I've tried the paintbrush, I want to make sure that this original structure is still respected. And because the brush is dry, it can pull up a little bit of the colorant that was previously used in a way that a wet paintbrush simply cannot... It can also move existing pigment to an area that already exists, but 
not what we're talking about right now. Let us. Hmm. And any any thoughts in the chat? Any uh, interest, concerns? I do. Somebody said. Honestly, I think um, the structure set up at the bottom is really strong, but the facial structure at the top probably needs more, more work, more stylization to follow through. Kind of this like gargoyle, really statuesque look that's set up at the bottom. Hmm. Has anyone been watching the um, Highly Quinn TV show? Real good. Real good. Okay. Yeah. Just because. Um, what is going on at the top here is here, right? There's water. My working area, there's water. The water will seep all the way out and it will start to warp, warp the paper. I don't want that to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a little bit of my new clip and like keep as much um, tension that I can. The more tension you have established, the less space there is for your pages to fuck up. Okay. We all can come back now. Yeah. Ton of water. Right out here. Actually, what I'm doing is building up some really thin blue wash. Um, so a wash is actually when you take a color and you dilute it a lot with water and you go for, usually it's a much larger area. Um, it's pretty typical doing watercolor washes for landscapes really getting a particular color tone you know in the background but you know we live honestly here is what is so crazy we live in entirely unprecedented times and you know i just want to try and give as much as i can in terms of structure and interest too. I think that's really important, especially now. Now more than ever. Alright, so down here, I just want to give some um, green. Um, you can probably see which greens I'm pulling out of. Um, I just, I think it's more important than ever that we, you know, support one another's creativity because in these times, so, so much of it is uh, difficult and undermining and yet there's so much faith, there's so much interest still available to us. Strong colors, strong interest, strong talent. You know? So don't give up. Alright. That got a little deeper than what I thought it would. Alright, so we've got this really nice, strong, dark green here. Got a pink. I the end. We've got a red outline. Let's try and figure out some sort of 
strong color to put in here. Hmm? Now here's the thing, right? I'm doing these strong colors because I've do because I've done these colors with um indie ink and watercolor, I cannot actually erase the lead or pencil drawings underneath. So I need I need I need to be comfortable with them. Or, or here's the other thing, I can come up with a strategy for painting over them. Hmm? Hear that? So even when you're doing these, you know, paintings, these colors, you, you should question, you should wonder, when am I erasing? What am I erasing? What will my colors paint over? Right? And I would say too, part of that, right, right? Just give a really strong yellow, right? And yet, because I came back in with a water, I can dilute it. By the time you get all the way up to the ears, how loose? Hmm? How established? We may not know. All right, so here's here's a strong red. Hmm. Okay. We're really working on a background. And I think here's the thing too that not everyone really can understand or get the 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 layup the build up that's so frustrating it's as frustrating as everything else all right so here's what we're doing i'm coming back in right into this blue because as frustrating as the situation is It also understands having to mix, having having to follow through with expectations you never believed in. And that, you know, we shouldn't we shouldn't dismiss everything. So I don't know if you can see but down here. I, I'm also building up another layer. And here Building an under layer. See, on a lot of paintings, classical paintings, what you end up actually seeing is that there is a black and white underpainting. Um, and that underpainting gives a really strong sense of the contrast for the painting. It's kind of a reference point for your classical painters as they go on. I'm not, I'm not a classical painter. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to say. I know that. I'm just trying to enjoy myself and have a little bit of a relaxing sip, huh? So here we go. Right here. And here right now, I'm gonna a little bit over this blue. That's fine. You know. Okay, a little bit of orange. Hmm. Okay. Now, what I would like to do a little bit more water, a little bit more orange. 
I would like to to build up in this transition. You know, I think one of the um, skills that can be really helpful is creating kind of like a gradient. Um, you know, white to black, any colors that you really find helpful or as part of your style. Get some more practice. Pra blah. The more practice you have with them, the more work, the more experience you can turn to. Okay. So here we've got over here something that looks a lot like mm, a sunset. Hmm, weird how that's happening. Um So one thing we should always consider is how we're doing, how happy we are. Are you happy with what we're doing? See? Content. Please. Relax. Let us know. Okay. So far, we've been using a pretty small brush. Let's... Here's a very, uh, well, not a very, but here's a larger brush, something relaxed. Here's what I want to do. First. Let's do a little bit of blending, right? A little bit of that work. So hopefully you can see. This is pretty relaxed. There's no particular set design. There's no particular geometry. We're just having fun. Hmm? Let us explore together. Hmm? Right. Are you having fun? You can say so. You don't have to say so if you don't want to. Alright, so on my shoulder... I think this will be a kind of stark setup. Oh, do you see that? Uh, do you see that? Part of what I'm saying, what I'm trying to point out, is that this um, watercolor actually has really strong pigments. Oh. So that's good for any work that you're doing. Um, the stronger the pigment, the stronger the color. As long as you know that's a property of what you're working with. Here's another little setup. Um, some of what I'm doing is painting over these graphite lines. So here's something to know. You, you cannot just erase a graphite line if it's under a different type of ink. So. I like to give some kind of loosey goosey setups. Loosey goosey gives away 